The master categories portion is when we get to talk about the tokens we drew the week before those tokens gave us our categories. We pick those topics based on those categories. That's the rules of the game. You know how it's played. Patrick, why don't you talk to us? I would love to. I forgot to tell you one thing, though. What? This is unrelated, but I feel so compelled to share this with the podcast crowd because we've talked about it several times. I finally, after almost five years, beat Candy Crush. Yeah, you did. Dude. And I just wanted to let you know, it took me 3,100 and 40 levels dollars to catch up <laughs> dollars but i was finally greeted with this that's awesome which man. which is the hey you gotta wait till we release more levels so you didn't delete which, it no i didn't delete it i don't know how i could <laughs> it's just i'm so used to the icon being there like if i remove that icon other icons are gonna like shuffle into its place and mm. then everything's off by one I well, so now, you just need to download yeah. soda crush put that in its place and beat that fully no, I can't. That that Why? seems like a bad idea. Don't say can't. You beat Candy no, now Crush. It's you just, could totally beat Soda Crush. Be an American, not an American. Yeah. No, I don't need to start another one. Do it. Um, you can do it. Anyway, I believe that's in it. You. Let me get into mine. I'm, I'm going to jump in. Art and designs. So that's what I had this week. That's what I've had the last two years. And uh, <laughs> I'm really learning a lot about it. Um, but this week, I wanted to jump into something that's more in my everyday territory. And, uh, and I, I realize... Uh, so there's two things. One, I... I I want to use this time to hopefully be a bit more educational, maybe than the round table time. And the second thing is, it's very easy to overlook the things that we do every day mm. to to forget how meaningful those things are, how valuable those things are, because we're just so used to them. So I want to talk about a topic that is something that uh, I I do deal with every day and how that can enhance the work that you're doing now. And those are packs of stray dogs that are taking over our country. <laughs> <laughs> Shoe Big Red. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a great blooper reel. If you haven't seen the Talladega Nights blooper reel, <laughs> pause this. Go watch the blooper reel. Go watch reel, that, yeah. And then come back. And then give on Patreon. And then, yeah, and then yeah. join us back here. There we go. Um, yeah, so the the so I'm, I'm a web developer by day. That's what I do. And so it's this. Now, this will extend beyond web, de- uh, web development into UI design. But then you could probably use it for... Uh, you know, graphic design, marketing, things like that. But the idea is component-based design. So if it's your first time sitting down to design a website or maybe you've been doing it for a bit and you just haven't come across this method, it's very easy to do the fun thing, which it, or fun thing, which is to sit down and just start building the homepage. Desktop view, homepage, start at the top, work my way down, like that. Uh, not saying anything's wrong with that, but I want to keep expanding on this. And then it's very easy to say, well, I need an about page. Start at the top, work your way down, build an about page, and then go to the next one. And then you end up with this file that has like 20 different page views, and they're all kind of a little bit different. And, try, you know, because you want them to all feel unique and like, uh, you know, a butterfly and all that kind of stuff. And uh, but they're all a little bit different and you're maybe not paying attention to, uh, <clears throat> you know, my type scale is that consistent. You're maybe not paying attention to this over here. And the reality is, even though you may not realize it, you're, you're creating a huge burden for yourself or your developer when you go to actually build the site. The other thing that you're doing is is you're building all, all, all of your site in such a way that you can't really reuse anything because everything is so purpose-built. And um, if it's your own stuff, that tends to be fine. But typically when we're dealing with clients, one thing that we want to do is demonstrate how we're bringing value. And it's one thing to say I'm building you a website, and it's another thing to, to say I'm building you a system that you can use on the web but that you can also use and apply to any number of things in the future. This does not this does not start and die here. This is something that you can continue to grow, iterate on, and again apply across your organization from a, a voice perspective and a visual perspective. And so, the idea here is uh, taking the um, uh, taking the stance of component based design and putting together a design system as opposed to a set of de- just. Yeah, again, single page web design files. So here's what that looks like in practice. Um, again, so the example before is that you, you, if you have 10 views that you sit down and you build, you put down 10 artboards and you build 10 views in, in you know, Sketch or Photoshop or whatever you're using. Don't use Photoshop. Please don't. Sketch. There we go. Um, but uh, again, there's a lot of potential problems there and you're not allowing... Um, 
you're not really allowing yourself any room to flex with what you've built. And so instead, what I like to say is that we're not setting out to build a website. What we're setting out to do is to build the system that you can then use to construct the website or construct a page. We just need to build the components. So the better thing to do, and maybe you do this through initially not uh, mocking up a page, but the better thing to do is uh, define uh, the components that you'll use to derive this flexible system. So um, what that could be, that could be, I need, I know that I, you know, need big media. I need to be able to show videos. And so I need to have a big media component that, that I use. that is my wrapper. Anytime I've got a video or, or a large image. Um, I know that I, I'm going to have a form somewhere. And so I need to have uh, a form that has these other smaller components that comprise it. I, I know I need an email call to action that I'm going to reuse in the footer, but I'm also going to use like at the top of the page. So I have this, like this component I want to have. Um, those are examples. And if you, focus on building just those components, then the larger wrapper does not matter. Again, in the example of the, the email sign up, if I build that component first, and I know that that component has an input and it has a submit button, and um, maybe I decide that this component taking a step back also has a header that attaches to it, I don't know, maybe not, you could start with just the simple form. Well then, I can drop it in the footer, I can drop it in the header, I can drop it in another uh, inside another larger section somewhere else without having to have four custom built sections. So what we like to do is start at the, the, the smallest components and expand up from there. Now again, you may need to you know, do some work to kind of determine what that approach is, but once you have enough groundwork done determining that approach, build the components. And from then what we can do is I can say, hey, we just got 80% of the way into this project or 90% of this project, and we totally forgot we have to have a case studies page. We, we, we should have built one. We never built one. We don't have a design for it. I don't know what to do. Great. Well, what I can do is I can reuse this component from over here and this component from over here and this component from over here, and I can construct that page. And then over time, as I iterate, all I have to do is add new components to the system or iterate on existing components in the system without having to throw it out and start from scratch, which again, it's kind of breaking the mentality of I build a website, it lives for three years, I delete it, and I build a new website. That's not what we want to do. We want to build something we can iterate on, grow with over time. And again, once you've done that, then you can start applying it to things you haven't thought of. Maybe I can take some of this system or some of these components um, and apply them to other digital mediums or even maybe some non-digital mediums or things like that. So that's what I would challenge you to do. Uh, I know that's a very, very broad, quick overview, um, but we also don't have a ton of time. So what I would challenge you to do is, if you're about to work on a website, about to work on an interface, something like that, um, take some time to really consider what are these smallest blocks, these smallest components, and then if you build enough of those, kind of like assembling Lego, you can then put together the larger picture, but you can also go ahead and assemble other pictures as well. So, and I it's, think a set... I was just gonna say this, I mean, that's how you built, you built our, the, the company that I work with, the organization that I work with, you built our site for us, and I'm constantly utilizing those, I mean, that, that, Lego structure to build pages that look really, really nice, like way better than, you know, what, you know, what I would have been able to build on my own. Um, because I just use all these different components and the components all work together because they were all designed to work together, but to, to, to be interchangeable. Yeah. And I think a second way, I know it's very easy when you talk about this to think, well, that doesn't sound very custom and that doesn't sound tailored. And how can I charge someone a lot of money for that? Think about it like you would think about pixel density. I mean, the, the reality is it's all well, red, green, blue. I mean, that yeah. like everything that you're seeing on your TV right, right now, your display as you're watching us on YouTube, we're, we're all derived from these little squares uh, of individual colors. And it's just the deeper the density, the, the you know, the more whatever the image is, you know, the, the, the individual pixels get lost inside the larger image. And so in the same way, when you're working on um, a website or something like that, it's easy to initially have the knee jerk reaction. That doesn't sound That doesn't sound custom, but the, the smaller, more specific, these components are kind of the deeper that density is. And then again, you're, you're building them, you're constructing a system that works with, with reusing them, um, but it, it can absolutely feel custom without creating a headache for yourself, a headache for your developer, um, 
And then it allows you to add value to the pitch you're giving the client because you get to look at the client and say, listen, I'm going to do you one better. I'm not going to build you a web page. I know you're asking for a web page. That's not what I'm going to build you. I'm going to build you a system. I'm going to build you a way of thinking uh, um, that you can apply to constructing a web page or to constructing 20 web pages or that you could then go and apply to other parts of your organization. And so now you've just increased the value you could, you're providing and therefore you're increasing the amount of money that you can ultimately charge, which of course everybody loves to hear that. So think in those terms, look up um, if you're a developer uh, in terms of writing that way, but it also helps you get the mindset for the design. Look at something like BIM. Um, it's it's a great way of thinking of, of actually like coding components and, and what that looks like um, uh, when you're styling them and, and creating your selectors. Um, for de- for uh, designers, uh, I'm sure if you look up component-based design, you can find a lot of examples and a lot of approaches for how to go about it. But it, it is really, really is the more successful way in the long term. And, and then beyond that, I would just challenge you, don't start with 40 blocks or components or whatever. Start with the bare minimum. Get them finished. Get it done. Get something in place. And then add to the system. Add to the system. Iterate on the system. Um and there's a, there's a whole nother talk about behind that. So, yeah, so that's it for this week. Maybe that was helpful, maybe not. But uh, yeah. if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Slack because that's the only place you're going to find me. And uh, otherwise, just tweet questions at us and I will a- answer any that I can. Andrew. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll take it. Uh, so I got uh, toys and games again, and I'm going to talk about a game um, that I uh, have backed on Kickstarter. I think I may have mentioned it in passing, like in one of my Around the Tables a while back, but now the game is up for pre-order, so I'm going to give it like a, a little bit more of a uh, an in-depth, not review because I haven't, I haven't played it yet. It's just back. But now that you have an opportunity to actually pick it up, sure. Um, Maybe explain it, and maybe some of you guys will um, choose to uh, to go buy this. Actually, as a side note to this, on on this on this note, uh, we were talking the other day. We would be interested to know if you've ever listened to the to an episode of the show, and then in after listening, ha- after hearing us talk about something, you've gone and purchased something. We would love to know that you that that happened. Um, maybe yeah. we'll send out. I don't know. Maybe we'll put a form or something like that, like a survey or something on our website. I don't, this this is all very real time thinking, but I would love to know. I know Patrick would love to know. Luke would love to know if you've ever purchased something and what that stuff is and what um, you thought of it. Did it meet what we said about it? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, maybe just be on the lookout for some kind of survey or, or something like that. But in the meantime, start thinking about that question. Have you ever bought something after listening? Um, anyway, uh, this game is called Kill the Unicorns, an enchanted card game for evil geniuses. Mm-hmm. Um, it's absolutely the cutest looking game uh, that that you've, that you've ever seen. Um, and uh, let me just start off with the artwork because that's kind of what I do, right? So sure. uh, the artist is uh, somebody that you might know if, you, if you're if on Instagram. I've been following his work on Instagram for a long time. He's actually how I found out about the game, Levi Pruitt. And I believe he was on the uh, Squared Co. podcast not too long ago, maybe a month or two ago. Um, so you can go listen to his episode over there. Maybe someday we'll have him on our show. Um, but it's all that kind of uh, cartoony, um, meets fantasy world mm-hmm. uh, approach the style, but anyway, the the general premise of the game is we're we're living in uh, I don't want to say it's post apocalyptic, but it's like uh, you know it's in the future maybe, um, or at least in an alternate reality where the gas that is put out by by um, unicorns is hazardous to the health. It's like like breaking down our ozone and it's, it's causing the energy crisis and all these, you know, all this different stuff. Um, and so the only way to reg- to, to help regulate this and moderate this is, is once a year, or maybe it's just periodically throughout the year, they have essentially a purging of, uh, the unicorns. <laughs> and so everyone's allowed, uh, for this day or whatever it is for this season to go unicorn hunting and to kill these unicorns. So the, the gameplay itself functions, um, as a blind uh bidding game so it's essentially you're trying to bluff people to to get cards and you're hoping um that the card you get is a that the card you kill 
uh, is a unicorn and different unicorns are worth different points and different kind, there's different kinds of unicorns and um, it's all very fun and playful. For instance, uh, some of the unicorns, just for a, just as an example, um, let me find it really quick. I'm trying to find it, find it, find it, find it. Uh, I literally just had it up and then I, I scrolled down to find the name of the artist. Um, there's like a, a, a ninja unicorn. There's uh, like a, a reindeer unicorn. Like he's like, it looks like he's going through like the like Christmas time. Mm. There's like a wizard unicorn and like a, what looks to be like a, a um, uh, evil Knievel, like a, like stunt. I don't know, but there's various different kinds of unicorns and they're all drawn very fun. But what you're trying not to do is get a, um, uh, a, what do you call it when something is not what it seems to be? I don't know. A like, lie. No, yeah, lie, but like, <laughs> yeah, a fa- not a facade, <laughs> but like, oh my gosh. You, there are pigs dressed as unicorns, and you don't want to get one of those. They're called pigacorns, and they're essentially pigs that have a, a unicorn. It's a disguise, a facade. Decoy. A disguise, sure, but that's, yeah, none of those are the actual word, but that's great. Um, Okay. And uh, if you get those, then they damage you, they harm you. Um, and so it's it's this whole uh, game of trying to get the most points uh, by not, um, you know, by, by getting the right, like bidding and guessing the right things, winning the cards you want and hoping that the cards you win are the actual good unicorns or actually unicorns and not the, the bad thing. So um, it was on Kickstarter, like I said, and the... This is what's incredible to me. So this game it seems to have very, it's very simple looking in terms of design. Yeah. Um, but initially they wanted to make um, $10,000. That was their goal. Yeah. They got $300,401. That's a lot more. Um, and it's a lot more. And so because of that, they reached all of their stretch goals and then some. And so if you get the game, if you pre-order the game, right now by going to Kickstarter and use and pre-order, it's probably through back or kit or something like that. Um, you can have access to all of those stretch goals uh, right now while it's still in pre-order. So don't wait on this game. You can pick it up. There's two different versions of it. There is the, um, there's the regular edition and then there's the legendary edition. The le- the legendary edition, which initially was only for Kickstarters, you can now get through pre-order through Kickstarter, um, is uh, like the regular edition's like pink and like very f- like uh, candy, like a like candy land kind of look or like Sugar Rush from, uh, from Wreck-It Ralph. Like it kind of looks crush. like that. Or Candy Crush, yeah, exactly like yeah. that. Um, and then the Legendary Edition is all like dark, deep purples and blues, uh, and it glows in the dark. So um, it's really cool. And, it looks like uh, for pre-order, <clears throat> sorry, for pre-order, all you can get is the retail version. You can't get the Legendary. Oh, then that then that just changed because uh, as of the other day when I when I looked this back up, you could get the legendary version. Oh, yep, you're okay. right. They just restricted it again, so they must be shifting into production now. Yeah, um, because I think they still had the the Kickstarter version available, gotcha. but you can get through the through Backer Kit, uh, which is uh, the service that they use to do the pre orders. You can get the Pigacorn plush, which is super cute. Um, Anyway, go pick up the game. It, it looks like a ton of fun. It's uh, it, it's kind of one of those gloriously irreverent type games, but sure. it looks like it's not. It's like in the same vein as like an exploding kittens or like a um, uh, the wizards. What is it? W- the Waverly battle wizards. <laughs> yeah, the battle. Yeah, the wizards of Waverly Place. Uh, the battle wizards game, Epic Spell but Wars. it's like it kid is. friendly. Like it seems yeah. like a, this could be a family friendly game. Well, yeah, um, it's also not Epic Spell Wars is is very uh, like adult themed. Right. Well, that's what. But I, that's what I meant by irreverent. Like this game has like farting unicorns and things like that. It's yeah. not. It's not for uh, necessarily like a three year old, unless sure. you know whatever. But uh, it looks really super fun, and um, I, I'm really excited to to get it in hand and play it, and then do an actual. Um, Review. You can play three to six players, by the way. So nice. it's it's a good game for a slightly larger crew. Mm-hmm. That's not another uh, secret identity game because right. it feels like most games. Once you bridge that five player, it's, it's like really oh, hard okay, to find a se- six player game that's not like a group game mechanic. Right. 
exactly. So yep. anyway, um, kill the unicorns. It's yeah, a lot man. of fun. All right, uh, Luke, I think that you're on the roster. I am. Uh, Take I, us home. Yeah, I had TV and film. Uh, man, a lot of good, a lot of good movies this week for me. Uh, I went. Uh, and I'm going to talk about two of them. I went and saw uh, Game Night, and I went and saw Annihilation. So I'm going to talk about Game Night first. I, Andrew has not seen this one. Patrick has, right. so we'll keep it spoiler free. We'll keep everything spoiler free because it's kind of. I mean, it's been a week. Um, but Game Night, we've seen. I mean, I I've seen previews. I feel like for Game Night for the last year. Um, I've, and uh, I was worried that it, we saw everything in the previews. Like we saw all the funny parts. Uh, I was wrong. Like it's hilarious. It's a great movie. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. There's some there's some parts that are obvious of what's going to happen, but then there's other parts that totally I didn't expect. Um, there's some jump scares in it, which was like really yeah, like it, not really like uh, I I don't know I don't know the way to say it. Not sinister, not creepy, but like just things happened that were a jump scare and it, you know, it scared me. And so I didn't expect that. Um, there's one part in the movie that, uh, I think Patrick had said on Slack or something that there was a part that he had laughed harder at than any movie he'd seen in a, in the last couple years. Part of it's in the preview. Part of it's in the trailer. Okay. So I don't think right? it's that part, but I laughed really hard at another part. Um, it's just a good movie. It's really funny. Uh, it's because I'll say this part of it's in the trailer, which is why I can say this, the bullet removal scene. Right. That's great. I was freaking, yeah. I was losing. I mean, that's one of the best parts in the movie. The other part for me was, um, when they first find the paper, like there's a, a paper, a, a, a paper oh, later okay. on. McKenzie lost, I lost it, when it that, at that part. I just <laughs> lost it. Um, so I know we're being. Did I you know this is no fun find it? for people listening. Yeah, no, because I didn't find we're trying it. to be really, we're trying to be super secretive, but genuinely, it's one of the funniest movies I've seen in in a while. It's great. I mean, it, it totally holds up. Everybody in the in the cast is good. Uh, I mean, you know, Jason Bateman is always good. Rachel McAdams, she was great. Kyle Chandler's good. Uh, Lamorne uh, Lamorne Morris uh, from um, New Girl. Uh, he, Winston. Winston, he's great. Um, uh, Kylie Bunbury, she was in Pitch. Uh, I don't know if any either of you watched that. I had watched that, and this role was like more, you know, obviously a comedy role for her. Uh, Pitch is a little bit more dramatic. Um, she was great in it. I mean, there's there's just really really good cast, and it, it's funny. Um, man, Jesse Plemons as Gary is the best. Like, I thought it was. Uh, Matt Damon, when I first saw the previews, um, like in makeup, I thought it was like just Matt Damon being a weird character, but Jesse Plemons is just so good. You know, he, and it's, it's funny cause he was, uh, similar, similarly captivating in Breaking Bad. If you, if you don't remember, sure. he's, uh, one of the characters in Breaking Bad, but he has this way of looking, um, uh, like for some reason, even when he's totally creepy and totally weird, you just want to take care of the guy. Right, right. Yeah, there's like that. He has that demeanor. Well, he looks like I a huge child. That and like that's an probably why child. you're just like he needs someone, right. and yet he can also be incredibly creepy, and you feel like he's going to murder you at the exact same moment. And not many people can pull that off, yeah. but he does it very well. Um, okay, so game night's great. Uh, the other movie is Annihilation. Now, this is a movie that, again, I feel like I've seen previews for a while for, and I was really, really looking forward to it. It's a sci-fi um, thriller drama. I wouldn't say it's like necessarily. It's called a, a heady, heady sci-fi. A heady sci-fi. Yes. Okay, it's that's got fine. Some heavy subject matter. Oh, oh absolutely. Gosh. That's that's what. That's what uh, Alamo Drafthouse does, like those those pre-show things. Yeah, yeah. And they they classified the film as a heady sci-fi. Okay. Yeah. So it's the story of uh, this this uh, woman Lena um, about her and her relationship with her husband, and then uh, 
they they're um, she's a a scientist, uh, and there's a, a thing that happens. Um, all of a sudden, there's an area uh, in in this park land that is um, kind of taken over by what they call the Shimmer. Uh, and the story is, uh, you know, you, you find out that um, without giving too much away, people go in and weird things happen. Um, and as you've seen from previews, there's all kinds of like transformation that happens in uh, flora and fauna and uh, animals and stuff like that. The movie is gorgeous. It looks incredible. Um, the acting is great. S the storytelling is, is very, um, very, uh, it's paced, very paced, very well. That was really hard to say. I don't know why, uh, is good pacing and it sounded incredible. So I've, I've been listening to score after I saw it Tuesday. I've been listening to the score since then. I can't stop listening to it. It's so great. Um, and I think the last movie that I listened to the score that much after I saw it was Sicario. Um, Blade Runner's score is uh, great, but Sicario, if you haven't listened to that score, that's an incredible score. But um, this score is just, it's so good. It, it's, it's by uh, Ben Salisbury and Jeff, uh, Jeff Barrow. Uh, they both work together on Ex Machina. Um, they did the score for that, which is also a great score. Um, but man, Annihilation is a super good movie. I would give it, I mean, easily a nine for me. I, it's one of those movies where I, I want to see it again. I can't stop thinking about some of the ideas they brought up in the story. And um, I don't know if I loved the ending, like the, the very end of it. Um, but man, I loved up to that point. What did you guys think? Andrew, you want to go first? Ha. Yeah, um, I'll go first. So my thoughts on it are that I, I agree with just about everything you said, Luke. The the soundtrack, I think, is what stole it for me. Mm. Um, oh, my gosh. That yeah, like that. So good. If you've seen the movie, you know what that means. Yeah. Um, but the like the the um, how that like that vibrates through your body mm -hmm. in the theaters. Um, how it just, it is a very, it's a, it's a tangible, uh, soundtrack, which yeah. is crazy. And when you mix that with the visuals, I thought the most beautiful thing, there were two, like two super beautiful elements of the shimmer, what the shimmer caused. And it's this mutation. And we see all this in the preview. So yeah. I'm not like, we're not, we're not saying anything that nobody knows. Um, are these, these human esque, uh, flowers sure. that grow yep. in the shape of humans. Yep. Um, and then those, those beautiful like deer creatures with, with flowers growing out of their, their yep. antlers. Like, yep. holy crap. Like those were, like, I want to draw those. Those yep. are, those are stunning. Um, I went into this movie with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder because I'm not a fan of Natalie Portman. I think we've talked about this, okay. but after what she said at the Golden Globes, like I've just got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. I said like I'm not going to see this movie because of that, and then I thought that's such a that's such a, an immature way to approach this. The movie can be good even though she's, a, in my opinion, just kind of a horrible person right now. Um, but she, uh, that's my opinion. That's, like, fine. that's fine. That's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. Um, well, Pat Patrick made this face of like, oh no. She doesn't he listen, didn't Patrick. Go it's fine. Um, Natalie but, Portman has a close place in my heart. That's fine. That's fine. He I mean, loved just, her as Padme. She'll always be Padme. Um, no, she'll be on the professional. But wow, yeah, anyway, um, but it was really, really good. Like the acting, she did great, actually, d despite my feelings toward her. Um, She's a great actress. She did great. She is good. And and that's, I think that that's maybe why I was so taken aback by what happened to the Golden Globes. Was like, oh, anyway, I, I usually forget. like her. But, um, uh, and then uh, Poe Dameron. What's his name? Oscar I'm Isaac. On his name. Oscar Isaac. Isaac. Not he play no plural. He plays such a good, creepy guy. Yeah. Like, 
like a good creepy. But he guy. wasn't. Um, so it's weird. It's super creepy in the movie. Like it's it's creepy because you don't you don't know what's going on for sure. Like you have ideas, but you don't know for sure. Yeah, it's not like the creepy like he's like a scary person. It's creepy like. I don't know who I don't know what you are. I don't know who you are. I don't like Oh, it just his 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 there's a there's a distinct moment where there's a shift in his uh not just his his demeanor but his appearance. Yeah. And he he can play a villain really 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 well. Yeah. And he's not a villain in this movie, but I just like I was like, "Oh, cuz I'm used to seeing him as Poe Dameron." Sure. And it's kind of the heroic. I know he's played other parts as well, but this he, that's where I, I kind of I, that's where I kind of got to know him and love him. Sure. Um did you so. you didn't see probably a most violent year? I in, didn't see that. So he's he plays the vil, a villain in that and he's man, he's I know that he has played a movie. villain before, but this was the first time where I was like, Oh right. yeah, he he can play a real kind of seedy, creepy sure. dude. Sure. Um but I thought that it was yeah, I, I thought that it was a really interesting take and uh it caused me to ask questions you know sure. to think about stuff and to yeah uh yeah and and there's not really a settling to the film either sure there's not really a resolve <laughs> it kind of leaves on this like i don't know what could happen i mean next. There, i would say that there is probably an emotional resolve with the people sure. but i understand what you're saying that maybe there's not a resolve at at the end of the film um, I, I, so I just got of the film, like literally I wanted to stay and watch the credits because the credits were so beautiful yeah. and I had to make myself leave. Cause I was like, I, I have to come podcast. Sure. I have to like get home. So, um, so I, I definitely just got out of this film. My, um, I I'm still like, um, it's a heavy film. Yeah. It is just a heavy film. And it's amazing how, whether or not there's stuff happening on sc- on screen, it manages to remain very suspenseful for most of the film. I mean, there's, there's just this always, uh, this, everything is always, uh, just unsettling, uh, because of the way they, um, they set up the beginning of the film and, yep. and the way everything's presented to you and, and the results. A lot of that happen. is the score though. A lot of it is the score. Sure. But I'm saying like what you're being told. Sure. Um, Coupled with uh, the scenery, there's there's always something creepy about when it gets dark in a wooded area. Um, but coupled with the music and it's everyone is just unsettled mm-hmm. the the whole time. And so, um, but once you um, you know start learning a bit more about what's happening and maybe why it's happening, and then once you start learning more about the characters that are involved, uh, it is just a very very heavy film. Uh, I will say that. Um, I I guessed part of it really early. Lee, there's something that happens that I that I not for any reason other than um, there's there's a um, in the first two minutes of the film something happens and it just stuck with me that I bet that's coming back and then I, I guessed a piece of it that happened. I it's fine though. It didn't it didn't affect anything like that. But it's. Um, it's kind of like a, a rival. I think I know like, what you're talking about, and I think the only thing that it affected was the motivation. So, like, you know how, like, in a, in a rival, like, if you if you've seen the end of the film and you go back and watch the the beginning, there's like four or five things that you're like that completely kind of give away, the, like a piece of like part sure. of the ending. Yeah. Um, I almost think watching Arrival primed me to look for that stuff early, mm. which is, it, it's another sci-fi film. It doesn't mean it's related, but th- it's, there it's are, there are definitely tropes. like, sure. There are definitely uh, some, uh, I don't know that obvious is the word, but some pretty heavy foreshadowing early, but um, I, I enjoyed the film. I don't know that I can say I love the film. I need to process the ending with people. Yeah. Like, and I, I think that once I have time to like spend like back and forth with someone, processing it then i can decide if i like it or don't like it um so I, think I, think that's a good, a, I think that's a fair assumption i was in that same yeah. place i haven't discussed it with anybody but i was in that same place for the first like day after i saw the film mm. i knew i loved the visual and i knew i loved the, the soundtrack and i knew the acting was great but i wasn't sure if i liked it i needed to kind of and that's kind of why it's called a heady yeah. film right because yeah. it gets in your head you have to think it through you have to process it sure so that's that's where I'm at on the film. So I, I it is th- there's no doubt that it's a good film. Uh, I don't know how much I like the film b- 
because there's just there's a lot of um there's just a lot to process through as far as the visual and the meaning and connecting it with the people and what we know about them and there's just a lot to process yeah. for the film so it's 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 um if that's the stuff you get excited about uh debating uh meaning for imagery and stuff then run to this film because yeah, yeah. you're gonna have a lot to talk about. So, so. Did, are you? Do you think you have enough of an opinion to have a number on it? Uh, no. I, I all I want to do right now is to just jump into like the the meat of the film, but I'm gonna just hold off. So, Andrew, did you uh, have a number again? There's no doubt it's a good film. Like if you're judging I it on, I'd on give like, it an eight. yeah, if you're judging it on the way like the acting and the score and the cinematography and the pacing and it's a great film. Yeah, it's a great film. Don't, don't hesitate to see it. I just don't know what like my. I just have more feelings I need yeah, to get out about it. Yeah, you have a resolve with your your thoughts on it. That's fine. Uh, I I would say it, definitely see it in a theater if you are, have any interest oh, at all in seeing yes. it. See it in a theater. Um, man, it's it's really. What's the number for you? For me, is it? Yeah. said a nine. nine oh, I didn't hear. Okay, nine. Um, yeah, that's. I good. mean, it it was it was great. I think the ending is the only thing keeping it. Uh, from being a 10 for me. Like I, I just, I loved it. Um, yeah. yeah, man. Did it get you excited for, uh, a quiet place? Uh, kind of. So I, I think a quiet place is going to be, uh, one of those movies where I'm going to have a hard time focusing on the movie because I'm going to be too You're gonna worried. You're going to be so scared. I'm going to be too worried about preparing for scares. Yes. So, I mean, that's fine. It is what it is. I'm still going to see it, but it's it's it has too much of a bent towards scare. And I, especially from the last trailer I saw, I didn't think it was going to be that quite that way until I saw the last trailer. Then I was like, oh, this is going to be a movie where I'm not going to be able to fully enjoy it because I'm just going to be scared. Um, but yeah, go see Annihilation. Go see it. Game Night. Go see movies. There's a lot of good stuff out. Go see movies. Yeah. yeah, Call Me By Your Name is out right now. Phantom Thread is out. Red Sparrow, uh, Red Sparrow just came out. These films we just talked about. There's a Phantom there's Thread's so been gone for like two weeks for my market. Yeah, I just got it this like, past week. That's really funny to me. Okay. I really wanted to see that. And then like I just waited a little bit too long and it was a little busy and I missed it. Come visit me. Okay. We'll go watch it. Sure. Sounds good. Um, all right. Well, that's it for this episode. You can find all the show notes and links. If you're watching this on YouTube right below us, uh, click on those things and find the things. And like we said, if, uh, if any of the stuff that we've talked about over the years, um, has pro ever prompted you to buy something, let us know. We want to, we want to hear about that. Um, and what you think, uh, go to M of one podcast.com. If you're listening to this on the audio version, you can hear, or you can hear, you can see all the links and stuff in our show notes. Yep. Um, that's a quick way to get onto that stuff. And while you're there hit up our archive peruse a whole bunch of other uh really really great episodes with really talented people mm -hmm. um you can support the show by uh, liking subscribing commenting sharing doing all those things on all the different platforms on social media on youtube on spotify on stitcher on google play on dasher on dancer on prancer on vixen <laughs> um you can just do nice. uh, all the things and uh, and it helps us out a ton or you can go to patreon.com slash of one podcast throw a couple dollars in the old proverbial bucket and that helps us out so so much as well rate and review while you're at it um we have a couple of things that we're going to be uh, at a couple of events yep. in a month or so we will be at at crop uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, the first week of April. So go to cropbr.com. That's going to be a great, great time. And then if you're over in the Georgia area a week later, we'll be at Creative South and we'll be hosting a workshop as well. So uh, go to creativesouth.com and, uh, and get your ticket to come. Uh, to the conference, but then certainly get your ticket for our uh, workshop. Spots are very, very limited. It's going to be a great time. It's called Podcasting with Dummies, um, and there's all sorts of great stuff that's going to be packed into that. But either way, if you're in either one of those areas, come and hang out with us. For any meetup information, stay tuned to our social media. Go to mof1podcast.com. We'll have all that information there. Um, but I think for now, we're going to call this one done. Are you guys cool with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're going to get out of here. I'm Andrew. I'm Patrick. I'm Luke. Peace out. Bye. Hold on to your butts. <laughs>